Hello, I'm Hawes Spencer, instructor in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University. During the fall semester of 2020, I taught my classes out here on the beautiful grassy area known as the Quad. At the same time, I taught my classes to students at home. Now I'm told that teaching simultaneously in person and online is called HyFlex, Hi for hybrid and flex for flexible. This sort of reminds me of the OptiGrab eyeglasses from the 1979 Steve Martin film The Jerk, but I digress. What separates my high flex is that it happens here, outdoors. If you're an instructor and want to do what I'm doing, I think I can help you do it. First, you should really see if you can flip your classroom and deliver the lectures and the readings in advance and then use this class time for discussion, for workshops, and for occasional guest speakers. Back in the old days, this type of teaching was called a seminar, and it was often reserved for uh, the cool upper-level courses. Now that we instructors can narrate our own slideshows, lectures, and videos, we've got this fancy new moniker, the flipped classroom, but at its heart, I think it's still a seminar. Seminars are great for any course that emphasizes readings like literature, language, history, philosophy, psychology, econ, business, really quite a few fields. Maybe it's trickier for physics or calculus or chemistry, but I don't know. I teach journalism and it works well here. Flipping your classroom means that you won't need to haul around a whiteboard, electric or analog. However, you will have to assemble some technology to let everyone communicate seamlessly. My portable rig uses off-the-shelf components costing about $400. The most expensive part is a parabolic mic. You've seen these on the sidelines at football games where they capture every grunt, tackle, and shout. Here, the parabolic mic picks up the voices of my in-person students and sends them into Zoom or WebEx or whatever meeting software you use. Next, you can see that I have attached a little webcam with Velcro to the edge of my parabolic dish. Usually this captures student comments and questions. One time this captured me dressed up in a class about writing headlines like the victim of an alien abduction. But I digress. Again. Other than that, you just need a tripod with a tray to hold your main computer or tablet. Let me uh, move this so you can see my tripod with tray and my laptop. And lastly, um, a speaker so that those of us who are in person can clearly hear the students at home. And that's it. Some universities are outfitting outdoor rooms in tents or enclosed structures with lots of expensive audiovisual equipment. What's wrong with these rooms are that they're expensive, cumbersome, ultimately disposable, and worst for everyone's safety, they're, they're not really outdoors. Just dealing with the chairs would be a nightmare. <clears throat> My students bring their own folding chair six dollars and 97 cents plus tax at Walmart or they just bring a blanket. JMU has hundreds of acres of grass just sitting here essentially saying teach on me, teach on me. We initially had a noise problem so I sent the facilities director an email asking if there could be more quiet in our outdoor classroom, I, and I hear a train now in the background, but I kind of like the background train noise. And, and the facilities director immediately agreed to stop lawn mowing and leaf blowing during my classes. I felt like royalty, and I don't even have a PhD. But what about the weather, you ask? Well, that's just common sense. When it's hot, I teach under a leafy tree and invite students to bring a fan if they need one. When it's cold, as it is today, it's about 37 degrees as I'm speaking to you, and I'm still ungloved, 
Um, I teach in the sun. And right now I'm dealing with a little bit of glare, but the sun is warming up my coat and I'm dressed in layers. And my students who just left a moment ago, they were dressed in layers. <sighs> you can deal. And finally, when it rains, as it has three times this semester, I just stay home and boot up WebEx for all of us. We had 27 class meetings, three of which were all virtual on the rainy days. No big deal. If you've made it this far in the video, you don't need to be reminded of the attributes of a flipped outdoor high flex classroom. But here are a few. A safer face-to-face -face experience. A simpler face-to-face -face experience with zero new infrastructure required from the school. A return to the time-honored seminar system. The mental and physical benefits of nature. Plus, the focus that students get from showing up in person and knowing that they can't just turn off their Zoom camera and disappear. They often need that focus. Last thing. Even before the pandemic, the value proposition of the American University was under fire. And making classes go virtual has emboldened critics to suggest that major universities are offering little more than what a student can learn on YouTube or Coursera. Many students, meanwhile, and their parents are understandably clamoring for in-person instruction. And at the same time, many professors are understandably fearful about gathering indoors. The outdoor high flex strategy that I have pursued allows the instructor to safeguard the health of everyone involved while delivering a meaningful, immersive experience for each learner, whether at home or in person. If you would like to learn more, take a look at the description where I will provide a shopping list and my contact information. Happy teaching. See you soon.